Happy New Year. <laughs> Listen, pay attention, look, stop. Here we are again, 2023. Hi everybody. <laughs> For any of you who are new here, hi. My name's Elena Joy. I make videos mostly about the queer community here on this channel. Sex, dating, relationships, but sometimes, once a year to be exact, I get into my bathtub fully clothed and answer your questions. And that's what we're doing today. Why? Let's just not worry about it, okay? That's the one question I will not be answering in this video. <laughs> It's a bathtub and I'm wearing a suit and about to get into it. It's true. Hashtag not clickbait. Do I enjoy baths? No. Am I gonna get into this bathtub? Yes. Last year, I think I wore overalls. And someone in the comments said that for next year, this year, I should wear like a full snowsuit. Someone said I should wear a gown, like a prom dress. And I want you to know I tried. I tried to make those dreams a reality. I went to the thrift store to try and find a snowsuit. And I also looked to see if they had like any kind of over the top dress. They did not. But what they did have was a plethora of men's suits. If not a snowsuit, why not this? Ready for Wall Street. <laughs> Every year we get to this part and I'm like, why? Why am I doing this? Nobody is forcing me to do this. Oh, it sucks. That sucks. <laughs> This is my job. Ugh, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Except another way where maybe I'm not in a bathtub in a suit. Actually, I would rather have it in a way where I'm not in a bathtub at all, if I'm getting to choose. Let's celebrate the new year. Let's do it. We free the cage from the wrapper, free the cork from the cage, and then we free the champagne from the bottle. Happy New Year! 2023, the year of the sparkling brew. Champagne. This is non-alcoholic champagne because I don't really feel like getting drunk today. Believe it or not, I do have some say in this whole process. <laughs> Let's give it a taste, shall we? It's a bit sweet. This kind of feels like it's gonna give me more of a headache than actual champagne would have. The worst part is always the arms. Let's get it done with, get it over with. Ugh. I learned how to tie a tie for this. <laughs> I went over on my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram already, what are you doing with your life? That's where the magic happens. And I asked you all for questions. This is the third year in a row in a new bathtub, right? That's gotta be some kind of record. Mary Kill Climbing Holds Edition. Okay, this is, this is maybe too easy, but f pockets. <laughs> Obviously. I would marry crimps and I would kill slopers. Like I would kill the sh out of slopers. They have no place in my heart or in my life. The Chosen Family podcast is amazing. Thank you so much. You are absolutely welcome and no thank you. Have you checked out the Chosen Family podcast? My podcast that I started? Have you checked that out yet? Me, Mac and Jimmy, Ashley Gavin, we started a podcast. It's very fun. You should check it out. It'll be linked in the description. If both you and she were single, would you consider dating Mac? No. <laughs> no. No. Mac is like my little sister. Absolutely not. Oh my god, I'm sweaty already. Do you keep in touch with any of your exes? I think I've talked about this before, but yes. Some yes, some no. It depends on the foundation that the relationship was formed on or like when you take the romantic aspect out of it, what's left? Is there a relationship left that's going to add to your life? So the exes that are still my friends or who are still like actively in my life are people who I just enjoy spending time with. The reason that we had a relationship or the thing that kept the relationship going was just like enjoyment of being around each other, you know? And these are still people that I can say that I trust. These are still people that bring joy and friendship to my life. But I will say I have no bad blood. I have no bad blood with any exes. Just some are still 
an active part of my life and some aren't. Do you consider it cheating when your partner's hall pass is her hot coworker? I mean, that's not up to me. That, that would be up to her partner. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so hot. Uh, favorite position, lol. Dry. Dry and in a different room. How is your heart? My heart is good. My heart is really good. Yeah. My heart is really good. And following that, are you single? No. Who does the dog in the recent video belong to? Uh, he belongs to the reason that I'm not single. And so, also me. <laughs> How are you doing really? How's life going? How did you grow in 2022? I feel like all of this kind of has the same answer. I'm doing well. It's kind of funny because you're gonna hear me saying this now. And then there's a Chosen Family episode coming out soon that we recorded like a month ago where I really wasn't doing so hot. Just know that I'm feeling a lot better now than I was when I when we recorded that. A strange feeling and therefore a strange thing to try and explain that I feel like I'm both doing the best I've ever been and the worst I've ever been at the same time somehow. I feel like in my life I'm at the best place I've ever been at. I feel like I'm the most myself I've ever been. I feel like I'm learning how to make choices for me and not for other people. But it's like in doing all those things, the process of unlearning and relearning, it's really hard work and it's really scary and vulnerable and anxiety inducing. It's hard to unlearn and relearn patterns and thoughts and beliefs and all these things that I held consciously and unconsciously for 28, 29, 30 years of my life. Changing those things, putting in the effort to explore and then change is hard. The other piece of it is that the more that I step into who I am and my choices and my life and my beliefs, all those years that I lived not as that person are heavy. Like it's hard, it's, it's painful to, to look back and to remember all of the time that I spent not feeling this way. Does that make sense? I want to hug my past self. Like I wish that she had known what I know now sooner and I wish that she didn't have to do all of the things that she thought that she had to do. That's where I'm at. I'm working on it and that work is only having positive effects. It also like puts me activating. You know? So, ah, doing great. 2023, new year, new me. <laughs> oh, it's, it's sweet. Do you have any internalized homophobia? And if so, how do you deal with it? Absolutely, I do. I don't know if it's internalized homophobia or if it's just like wanting to keep myself safe. It could be a bit of both, right? Like I'm thinking about holding my girlfriend's hand in public or like being affectionate with her around people that I don't know. There's always this thought in my head that's wondering like how the people around me are feeling about that. And so I'll find myself modifying my behavior or like restricting my behavior for fear that I'm making other people uncomfortable or something. But deeper than that, I, I'm sure that this is a common experience and therefore I think it's important to talk about is I'll say very broadly, figuring out the things that I like and then feeling a lot of shame or fear fear or anxiety or whatever negative emotion, insert negative emotion here at like wanting that. That's definitely internalized homophobia. Absolutely. How old were you when you realized you liked a girl? This is more complicated than you would think it would be. I liked a girl in high school and we basically had a full blown relationship, but like didn't know that that's what we were doing. Like we just thought, we're just like such good friends. We're just like so close. <laughs> We're just like so close that we joke about like getting old together and living together and only having one bedroom in our house and how like everyone would think we were so kooky, weird, funny in a silly, goofy mood because of our <laughs> house with one bedroom. I genuinely didn't realize that like I liked her. I didn't know. So it was only when I discovered bisexuality 
which I think I was 18, that I was like, oh no, realizing that I uh, liked a girl. So I guess I'll say I was like 18 when I actually realized. How does it feel going almost three years strong living the gay life? Elaborate. It's absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> like, I'm like, I could have been doing this the whole time. I could have been doing this the whole time. Why did nobody tell me? It like actually is upsetting that nobody told me this, <laughs> that this was possible. When like business dudes sit down, they unbutton their jackets, right? That's a thing that they do. Oh my God, it's so hot. It's too hot. It's too hot for a suit jacket. Is this cheating? It's my video and I take off my suit jacket a little bit if I want to. How to elaborate. I'm wearing a business suit and sitting in a bathtub drinking non-alcoholic champagne. Need I elaborate more? Like, you're probably watching this like, yeah, what? Yes, that makes no sense. It doesn't have to make sense to you. Okay, babe? It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle choice. Why am I even talking about? I swear this is not alcoholic. Life feels real. I don't really know how to describe it. It feels like I've been walking around in the dark, kind of like half seeing the world, but thinking I was seeing the world, and then suddenly someone put the colors back. I feel amazed. It's absolutely unbelievable. What's the most challenging thing you've had to encounter since coming out? Probably the continuous need to come out. I've never experienced that before. When I was queer and dating a man, I got to decide when I wanted to come out or not come out, which is still true to a point now, but like if I was ever in a situation where I didn't want to come out or I didn't want to be seen as different, I didn't want to be othered for my queerness, my relationship with a man like guarded me from that, you know, because everybody sees you, they see you as a woman, they see you're, that you're with a man and they assume, ah uh, yes, straight relationship, check. Woman likes man, check, like safe, good, normal. Whereas now my options are either come out or lie. And there isn't that chance if like I'm actually out with my partner. So when you are in situations where you don't know if it's an okay space to be openly queer, I'm finding it really painful. I didn't expect how hard I was gonna find it to like hide my love for my partner. It's been really hard to be in situations where other people are allowed and accepted to, to be openly in their relationships with their partner and to like openly show love and affection to their partner because they're a straight relationship and then to be with my partner and to not be given the same recognition as the other couples is painful. I think I kind of naively thought, you know, well, I just don't, I don't care that I'm gay and like I accept myself as gay, so I'm going to be openly gay. I'm gonna be openly queer no matter where I am. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter because I accept myself so I don't care what other people think. That's just not the reality. How do you know if your feelings are platonic? Oh, we knew that was gonna happen, didn't we? We knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> Just like, what could make this bath experience better? Bubbles. This is now a bubble bath. How do you know if your feelings are platonic or romantic? I'm not an expert here, and I'm sure there's a lot better advice than this. I would imagine if I want to kiss that person. Actually imagine kissing them. Do I want to do that? And kissing doesn't equate to romance for everybody in any me by any means. Like obviously sexual attraction, romantic attraction can be different. That's a good way that I can differentiate between platonic feelings and other feelings is like, do I want to kiss this person? And also it's, it's trying to differentiate between do I want to kiss this person because I want to kiss someone or do I want to kiss this person because it's this person? You know? What is your dream bathtub? No bathtub. And if that's not an option, then a bathtub half filled with non-alcoholic champagne. <laughs> What's one thing you've been scared of trying, but you decided to do this year? Saying no. Saying, no thank you. I don't want to do that. You should try it. It's terrifying. How are those socks feeling? 
A plus, baby. What are your 2023 goals? All of my 2023 goals, at least at this point, they kind of evolve as January goes on, generally. There's so much air in my pants right now. I wish you could see this like big, this like air bubble. All of my goals for 2023 kind of stem from the same umbrella goal. And that umbrella goal is to do more of the things that I enjoy just because I enjoy them. It's kind of like more enjoy, less work. It really kind of sunk in in 2022. If something is not for my work, I struggle to do it at all. I struggle to fill time that I'm not working with things that I enjoy. So I end up either working all the time or wasting the time that I'm not working. Basically in 2023, I'm working on scheduling my time more efficiently. I'm trying to kind of block schedule similar types of activities in one chunk to like leave more chunks open. Does that make sense? I don't know how to explain this. So for example, instead of scheduling a meeting in the morning, then I'm gonna do some emails, then I'm supposed to film a video, then I have another meeting, and then like gonna try to go climbing or like do an Instagram photo or something. Where that's like six different things in one day and my brain just kind of feels scattered the whole time and like I'm like trying to just keep up. Instead, I'm trying to like schedule all my meetings one after the other in the morning. The afternoon is for admin. Trying to kind of block out my time in a way that eases some of the chaos in my brain so that it leaves more time for like schoolwork or, you know, I like studying French. I wanna do more climbing, read more books, like whatever. I really need to pee at this point. So it kind of ties back into the like keeping practicing saying no thing. I wanna say yes to the things that I want and I wanna say no to the things that I don't want. Things big and small, whether that's activities or alcohol, right? Oh God, did I, have I been reevaluating my relationship with alcohol the last couple of years? That's a whole different video. Thank you so much to everybody who submitted questions. If you don't follow me on Instagram already, what are you doing? That's where the magic happens. It's also where the climbing happens. That's where the updates happen. That's where I pull questions from. Check out my podcast, Chosen Family Podcast. Podcast, everywhere that you get podcasts. An extra thank you, as always, to my VIP patrons, my vitally important producers. These videos, like this specific type of video, it's for you. That's who this video is for. I know I say it every time, but the reason that I can make these ridiculous videos is because of my patrons. So thank you all very much. I hope that you had a happy new year. Let me know what some of your goals are in the comments down below because I would love to get some inspiration from you. I love you very much and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, now for this, this part where I try to get out. Oh my.